I think like in the beginning is hard. Yeah. I think the only reason why it's hard is because sometimes we just need a little bit of time mm. to realize how good God is. So, um, let me start with the usual. Hi guys, welcome back to the Honey and Milk podcast. I am Bernie Stauda, your host, and the Holy Spirit, the wonderful co-host that is here with us right now. And um, if you're new here, welcome, get comfortable. I really, really am excited for today's episode. I believe it's going to be an awesome time. And um, if you have been here before, welcome. I know that it's it's been a while since I posted um but at the end of it i'll also say why it took that long and um but yeah get seated get comfortable and let's get into today's topic and today's topic is to do with how to be real in the world that really is inspiring fakeness and inspiring um not being real living in this fake world uh, now more than ever we have influencers that are being debunked and we see this lack of authenticity and lack of honesty and it also influences our relationships as well how to be accountable so in the previous episode i believe in one of the previous episodes i talked about hidden sins and how one of it one of the ways to break out of hidden sins is to be accountable to someone so how do you find that person to be authentic and to be accountable with um that is what we're discussing about today and with me i have one of my very authentic and accountable friends <laughs> i love her so much and it's been a joy and an honor to be a friend for so long and yeah i have with me blessing sambe so blessing feel free to introduce yourself let's get to know you okay hi everyone my name is blessing sandy and i am very happy to be on this podcast for the second time um bernice has been my friend for how many years now let's say let's say 20 but there was a break in that relationship adulthood teenagehood distance like there was a lot of you know barriers in our relationship there were a lot of barriers in the relationship but finally by god's grace we were able to bridge the gap a few years ago and we picked up like we didn't stop and we're best of friends right now and we give all credit to god and the holy spirit for bringing us together at the right time but yeah my name is blessing again sandy happy to be here I am a student currently doing my postgraduate degree in Lagos, Nigeria. It's nice to be here. Okay. So when I hear accountability, the first thing that comes to my head is responsibility. So I feel and I believe that accountability means being responsible for your actions and choices and for us as christians it has to be anchored in our faith so if i could put it in one sentence i'll say it involves being responsible for your actions and your choices in the light of your faith as a christian we christians believe that god sees everything but i believe that accountability is about having trusted people in your life um, that can provide guidance and support for you as an individual um then when we think about authenticity the first word that actually comes to my mind is genuity or originality and to me i believe that it means living a genuine life that aligns with our christian beliefs um it's about being true to yourself and to your values we're in a world right now that has a lot of facade and um the need to be perfect right this is where authenticity comes in it gives you the opportunity to be yourself unapologetically right to be who god made you to be when he created you 
Um, I also believe that authenticity is about being transparent. You open up yourself to God's grace and then receive support from the people that God has placed um, inside of you. I believe that we cannot do life alone, right? And this is where community comes in. This is where friendship comes in. This is where having the right support comes in. Um, I want to quickly say something about um, support while we're on these questions. Um, what I want to say is about us as Christians and the is bias the word that we have to go into church. Most people believe that there is no need to go to church as Christians, but if you look at the word of God, you would understand that we are supposed to be surrounded with the right people and at the right time, which is why God created church and then community as well. So it is important to have all of these people that God has given you or placed in your life to help guide you to a path of authenticity and accountability. Yeah, you actually cannot be, um, you can't fully get the accountability journey, a big partnership, if you're not being honest, like you won't get the fullness of it. Mm. You have to be honest with whoever you're with. You have to be true. You have to be truthful to, to whoever you're speaking with, your community or your person, to be able to fully enjoy the experience. So yeah, you really can and they really do not um, depend on each other. They depend on each other. Oh God, what's going on? They actually depend on each other. Oh, so like as you're saying that okay so you're saying no it doesn't depend like okay in the the way your mind is thinking about it i'm guessing there's something that is like on your mind that's making you think like no it doesn't but at the same time it does so like in your no answer what is it that is coming to mind like what is the scenario that is playing in your head that um that is allowing you to say no because you actually made a statement and you're like you will not get the fullness of accountability if you are not honest so i think i understand where you're coming from when you say no it doesn't depend on each other but then seeing that you're like go back to your definition of what was accountability for you so going back to your definition of accountability then does it actually depend or not so like just walk me through your thought process right now some people can actually say they don't need um people to hold them accountable right they can just like how i define it i was like some people can say god sees all things right and just you know live whatever kind of life they want to live without necessarily proving anything to anybody but i also feel like if you look at the other side when you have other people that are looking out for you or a community of people, a, com a person, sorry, community or a person that are looking out for you and you have to go back to them maybe every now and then to give them feedback or continue conversations that you started out with them, right? You need to be honest, right? Oftentimes, being authentic um, comes with being vulnerable, right? Um, you can approach some, sorry, being authentic, yes, comes with being vulnerable with the people that you are um, speaking with. There are some sensitive subjects or topics that you guys might be talking about and then you might end up crying or you might go on an emotional rant or something. So that is you being vulnerable. So if you are not fully authentic, if you are not fully truthful, I don't know how you can be accountable to somebody. Even in our relationship with God, Oftentimes, it involves us bearing our souls and our hearts to Him in the place of prayer. There are often times that we approach the um, place of prayer and words are not coming out because maybe we're hurt by something and the only thing that comes to mind is to cry and then the tears just start flowing. So if I'm not authentic, if I'm not true, if I'm not transparent, if I'm not original, how then can I be accountable to God and to the people in my life? So that's how I'm thinking about it, honestly. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So, okay. Then let's, from that, I also then want to bring another question. So you spoke about um, 
being accountable to others, being authentic to others, and then also with God as well. So that is like something I want us to dive in deeper today about how there is an aspect, like how accountability and authenticity also goes with our work with God. So where does this, I, I see it's like there is the religious as- aspect of it that causes us to have prayer times and all of that. So there is the consistency, the regimen, the routine, but at some point it starts to get disconnected from our emotions, if you get what I mean. And then it now leaves us in this place of being dishonest with ourselves and being dishonest with God. Because like you said, that you come to a place and there there will be, there's no time in our life. (laughs) Our lives are not perfect. There's no, there's no way we can ever say that our lives are perfect and then everything is going smoothly, you know, rainbows and sunshine every day, hallelujah. There are going to be days where you're angry or you're upset or you're, something happens, like we live in a world of human beings. But then there is also this narrative that I've found with a few people or rather yeah, with a few people and it's that whenever they are hurt, they don't find that safe space with God to be held accountable for our emotions and held accountable for the things that we are going through. So how does that work for you? Like give, given from your own point of view, how do you stay open vulnerable authentic and accountable to god and to the holy like to the holy spirit and to the father and to jesus so how do you how how has your relationship been with god have you always been authentic (laughs) so um growing up i mean we were taught that prayer is speaking to god and we didn't really understand that sometimes prayer is not the traditional way that we were taught what i mean is traditionally we were taught that you would go find somewhere to kneel down put your hands together close your eyes and start talking to god in a certain place right but um that was how we were brought up basically that that's how prayer is supposed to be we were not taught that prayer can be done at any point in your life at any time anywhere right i can just be sitting down or eating and i'm conversing with the holy spirit and i'm talking to god and i'm praying we're not taught that so praying or my prayer life growing up was such a struggle because i always wanted to find a place or a time the right time or in the right place to just all kneel down put my hands together and then talk to god so there was that initial struggle but as i grew up as i kept understanding the word and kept interacting with um, Christians and my friends who are believers as well. I just understood that prayer is not the way we were told it was. You don't necessarily, while it's nice to have a prayer room, a prayer closet, you can do, you can make, you can have a conversation with God anywhere. You can pray at any point and at any time, right? It is good to have a routine, very important to have a routine, but it can be done anywhere. Oftentimes, um, while I was struggling to find a routine, like a special time, a special place to have a conversation with God, the devil would put lies in my head and tell me, oh, you missed your time. Maybe I overslept. The alarm rang and I did not wake up. The devil would put voices or thoughts in my head that, oh, you missed your prayer time today. You cannot pray again. And throughout the day, I'll walk through the day thinking, oh, I missed my prayer time. I cannot do it again, you know, and stuff like that. Those were lies the devil was putting in my head as I was growing up a Christian. But now I understand that I do not necessarily have to listen to him, number one. Number two, if I miss my prayer time, the arms of God is always open wide to receive me at any point in my day. So nowadays, when I miss my prayer time, like I did today, I can just sit maybe in my classroom, wear my earpiece or bow down my head, or just even be looking around, but I'm having a conversation with God, right? And then when you asked about um, authenticity and vulnerability, there are also moments in my day that 
um, it gets hard, right? Maybe I, I actually showed up to my prayer time and to my prayer place. I had a good um, meeting with God. He spoke really good words to me that day. And I go in to face my day and then I meet a roadblock in the course of my day. Does that mean I will not have a conversation with God because I'm not in the right place, maybe in my room somewhere, or it's not the 7 a.m. time that we have agreed we meet every day? Do you understand? I can just sit where I am and bow my head and just have a conversation and be honest and just say, God, like a friend, basically, and say, God, um, the day is not going as, you know, we agreed it would. This person did this. This happened. Please fix it. And before you open your eyes, or maybe after you open your eyes, you see that God has actually answered that short prayer and has fixed it. So I understood over time that um, there are no confines or restrictions to these things. You just always have to be open to letting the Holy Spirit lead you, right? Nurture yourself. I mean, nourish yourself with the Word of God and then be open to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That helps all the time. Oh, amazing. That's really cool. And um, so as you were speaking and you spoke about, um, you spoke about how like after you pray, after you've had like a tough day or something and you're asking God like help me with this and before you can open your eyes, uh, the stuff is like resolved. And it reminded me of a time, actually several times, that it happened to me, but it was a bit longer than opening my eyes. <laughs> it was more like I slept. <laughs> it's true. It's more that it's more like I slept. So, um, hmm. I sort of use that to just describe how quickly God answers us, right? No, yeah, I understand. Which is which is also like like as we were speaking about it, I was like, this is so true. Um, he actually answers quite speedily, especially when we are very honest with him. So I noticed that whenever I am honest with God about how I'm feeling and what I'm going through, that is when he actually starts dealing with it. So there was a time in my life that I was I noticed that I had jealousy. It was it was stupid jealousy. <laughs> it was stupid jealousy. But I, I I, would just be so upset that somebody else is getting something that I'm not getting. And normally, we would not want to bring that to God. And it's also, so that was one incident. And also as well with crushes. So that was a thing, like when you're waiting on God, especially in your single season, it's not like nobody will cross ac pass across your mind. It's not like you will not have somebody that you find attractive. So like in those moments, um, I realized that whenever I was really, really honest to God, whenever I was really honest and like, sa, respectfully, <laughs> I'm jealous. I don't like that um, this thing is happening and can you help me with this? That is when I started to actually break off of the jealousy but if i did not be honest to god and tell god like this is what i need help with number one it might not have been dealt with and number two even if it was dealt with i wouldn't understand that it was dealt with so sometimes whenever we i think that is the beauty of praying in our understanding as well as well as praying in the spirit both are important but when you pray with your understanding it helps you to on know when a prayer has been answered so as you're praying in the spirit there are prayer points that you're giving and the lord is answering it but you might not be aware of it but when you pray with your understanding there are some prayer points that you will know when it starts to change and when things start to 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 be transformed so i noticed that when i tell god like honestly i'm jealous this is what i'm going through he then brought about a series of ev events that really helped me to get to the bottom of why i felt jealous and then he started pointing out that this was a thing that happened from your childhood this is the reason this is what it is break out of this so i really started getting the core answer like it's not just okay after a while i don't feel jealous again but then it breaks like 
the spirit of jealousy off of you completely it's kind of like deliverance in a way and it's the same thing with whenever i have a crush i'm like god you said do not awaken love before it's ready number one this person is not even the person <laughs> this person is not even the person but you know the flesh is trying to trying to move in can you help me here and it has happened twice so like as you were just speaking i just remembered it actually yeah it, it has happened twice to me where i was honest with god i'm like god i'm catching feelings for somebody that i'm not meant to be catching feelings for at all and in the next day i woke up i was okay like it was like the emotions were taken out of me it was i can't even explain it the first i looked at the person i was like wow i feel nothing like this is not even it's not even a joke it's like a supernatural miracle i don't know how to describe it but i literally feel nothing for you and this is in all sincerity because i was open and honest with god i was accountable to god so i think there is there is in our work with god it really does help when we start to become accountable and authentic with god honest with god you know he's a spirit and the holy spirit is the spirit of truth as well so that means he can handle all truth most likely it's you that can handle all truth <laughs> but he can handle all truth so yeah. um, so we operate in the spirit so we might not really understand the safe space that god mm. has created for us mm. if we operate in the flesh right we would want to see physical confines or physical settled to understand that oh god has created this box and said okay this is a safe space for you but once you're operating in spirit, mm. you just understand that automatically says you're operating from a place of peace and safety. Mm. So to be able to operate mm. fully, you know, you need to operate in a place. You need to operate spiritually, basically. We're spiritual beings, right? We need to fully tap into that. Mm, hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, to God, I mean, we spend so much time talking about it. God wants us to come as we are, right? So he's always there for us. So all we need to always do is just go to him, right? He has, we know that God is trustworthy. We know that God is loving. We know that God will not judge us. We know that God, if there's anyone in the entire world that loves us, even more than our parents. In fact, our parents are just custodians, right? He loves us more than our parents. So the safest place to ever go to, right, is always God. But in terms of human beings and the society that we're in, we're in really tough times. I mean, everybody knows this. And it is hard, very, very hard to identify the right people to open up to, right, and to even know who to approach. If we look at our beauty, those things are very fleeting, right? Um, and they're not enough to know that, okay, this is the person that I would go to and be open with. So I would like to say the first thing to do if you are looking for the right community or the right people is to involve the Holy Spirit. He's our best teacher, right? He's our best bet in navigating relationships and friendships um, and even finding the right community. So open up your mouth and pray and just ask the Holy Spirit, okay, I need people. Um, I need the right person to be able to share this, um, maybe journey with, um, and I need the person to be able to hold me accountable um, through this journey. I know you are there for me, God, but I also need the person. And God will show up for you. A very good example for me is my journey here during my postgraduate uh, for four months of my very good friend, Ahmed. So I, don't, I can't even really explain how our relationship started, but... Um, we just used to tease each other because the very first day in class, he turned back to me and was looking at me with a very straight face, and I just told him, smile. And then the next day I came to class, he turned back and then he smiled. It was a very fake smile. And I was like, why did you give me a fake smile? And he was like, because the previous day I had told him to smile. So I think that was how we started speaking. But the point I'm trying to make is that Ahmed is someone that I have become very accountable to. I'm struggling with opening up my opening up who I am, opening up with who I am to people 
because I mean, like I said, we're in very tough times and I've not really had smooth relationships with people, right? So it's very hard to trust people. So um, it was very hard at first, but Ahmed over time has shown that he's number one, very trustworthy, right? Um, over the months, we just catch up. We have this end of the month check-ins that we do. So we just check in all oh, schoolwork, personal development, spirituality, how far have you met up your goals? Are you slacking? Why are you slacking? How do you need to step in? You know, and stuff like that. So first of all, Ahmed has shown me that he's trustworthy, right? Ahmed has also shown me that he's supportive. On days that I don't show up for meetings, he's like, Sammy, where are you? Blessing, where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, we have a meeting. And then I rush to the meeting. And then Ahmed is very honest. He has shown me that he's honest. So the person that um, the Holy Spirit will lead you to exhibit some of these qualities. Trustworthy. The person will be supportive. The person will be honest. Another good point is that the person will most likely be a good listener. Right? Um, it is very difficult to do in a, very, in a module that we just did to be spoke about deep listening sometimes um you want to be accountable to someone and you just want to go where you've gone a full grown and, and you don't want the person to stop you and say oh, oh why did this happen oh maybe find loopholes in your rant you just want someone that will just be there to listen to you that is hard to find and that is hard to do but you also need you would also need someone who's a very good listener and most importantly, someone who shares values, similar values with you. You don't want to go and share things with someone who will not lead you or steer you in the right direction. Which all boils back to the Holy Spirit, right? If the Holy Spirit will lead you, I believe that he will, he will give your heart or trust your heart with the right person or the right persons um, in your life. I hope I've been able to answer that. <laughs> I hope I've been able to answer that. I want to say I like Apostle Paul's relationship with God. <laughs> oh. Right? Apostle Paul. Yeah, but I mean, that's why I laughed. But a good example would be David. I mean, we read the book of Psalms every mm. other day. And the relationship that David had with God is such a huge motivation for me. Um, I always ask myself after reading some Psalms that when will I ever get to a place in my relationship with God that I can be this open, right, with my words, with my emotions, with how, I'm, like generally, the relationship that David had with God was such a very beautiful relationship. And then, like I said, you can see it in the book of Psalms. Every psalm that David wrote, his soul, his heart, his mind was in all of it. So that's a very good relationship. That's one I admire. Then in terms of people, there are actually a lot, but I really love the relationship that Ruth and Naomi shared. I mean, they started off as oh, mother. <laughs> They started off as mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship, but they became really good friends, if you ask me, right? Deep respect, deep love, um, despite um, their age differences. Um, Ruth chose, everybody knows how the story went in Ruth chapter 1, <laughs> verse 16 to 17, um, but Ruth chose to stay with her mother-in-law right and she showed a deep sense of commitment um faithfulness and we saw how they were able to navigate the boas situation together right as a nigerian i can't imagine i can't imagine doing that with my nigerian mother-in-law right um uh, it's hard to the think fact that about. naomi was like <laughs> yes a lot of people um i i don't know if a lot of people recognize that now Ruth's head was not even with Boaz. Mm -hmm. Ruth's head was not even there. It was mm -hmm. Naomi that was like, ah, mm -hmm. this baby, mm -hmm. you're too, you're too nice. You know when yeah. an auntie is like, I have a son. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent of it. it. Says this one, ah, it's my king's man. Why not settle down? So Naomi was the plug. She was the wing woman. Yeah, she was. That's she crazy. was such a very committed wing woman. 
Give me hot tips on how to secure the man. <laughs> Mm. Like that. Even told her how to dress, you know, put the cloak like this. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah. that is a very good example. That is the only example that so many examples come to her to my mind actually, but that is one that actually stands out for me. I, I admire their relationship so much. Um, trust, mm. commitment, their bonds, and then intentionally choosing themselves do you understand despite everything that they have gone through um Ru chose yeah. naomi and you could see that naomi chose her the, there was a lot of reciprocity in their relationship it was not a case of um one person was in it alone right they were fully committed to it and it was very beautiful to see and we could see how and who ruth became at the end of the day, in her relationship with Boaz, and then now me support to her as well. Very beautiful to see. Mm. Very beautiful to see. I mean, you cannot get things wrong when you're in the hand of God. Like I always say, once you are, you've entrusted yourself to God, once you've entrusted something to God, you can never go wrong. Yes, there might be challenges, there might be trials, there might be initial distractions on the way, but always remember that you cannot go wrong with God. Yeah. <laughs> always always remember that you can never go wrong with God. Yeah. <sighs> to be honest, it's well. It's hard. Um, I mean, it's hard. It's it's very hard. It's very very I think like in the beginning it's hard. I think the only reason why it's hard is because sometimes we just need a little bit of time to realize how good God is. Like how loving he is once you understand maybe not the full depth of how faithful and loving and god is it's very easy after a while at some point you're like and like at some point you're even like i don't even like myself the way god likes me (laughs) i don't even like myself the way god likes me it's him that loves me the most so it, it it starts to get easier so it's just hard in the beginning when maybe it's your first time not having enough money and you're looking like, oh, what's up? But then by the time he comes through the first time, the second time, uh, the third time, we're like, okay, <laughs> you're just cool. Yeah, okay. You're like, it is what it is, you know? Uh, it's the same thing. So I, I, it's just hard in the beginning. But then as we journey on with God, as we realize that he is very, very intentional, he is very timely, he comes on time and he comes, sometimes he likes to come big. He comes, he comes big. I feel like God is so extra. God, God, God does not know. He does not do bare minimum. Like he, <laughs> God. I mean, if I could share... Before applying to this program that I applied for, I mean, you know the story already, how everything happened, how I was trying to apply for schools abroad, and then schools abroad was not working, exchange rates and stuff like that, and I was like, oh, okay. I even told my sister at some point, I think it was you, that I was going to apply to Unilag or UI and stuff like that, and just go back to the Nigerian education system. I didn't want that for myself. For my next degree, I wanted education. Like, I wanted to learn. I didn't want to go into the four walls of a classroom and then go back to cramming. I wanted to be fully immersed in whatever um, degree I was going to be getting, which was why I was looking to go abroad. And again, it was a means to escape Nigeria. Don't tell anybody. But, I mean, you know that I was so bent on getting that the education part of things and then it wasn't working out and i was very worried and i wanted to settle right and i started looking oh university of Ibadan, oh ab news area has this distance learning thing and then i wanted to apply for that and i spoke to people right a few people in my life i don't really have a lot of people but i have a very small or very tight knit circle i spoke to my sister and my sister was like Mm-mm, don't do it, don't settle, Apply, keep applying to all those schools. And then I spoke to my former boss, this is more, and he mentioned, oh, okay, I know of a school in Lagos. The name of the school is NUCM, and they have classes by the beach. I was like, what? And it's not the Nigerian 
way of education. I was too stunned to speak because I have I had in my head I had looked everywhere, I had exhausted the options I had, and I didn't think I would see any other um, option like this. And then she shared it with me, and lo and behold, they were, they, not that they had classes like the beach, but the campus was like the beach, and it was not the traditional way of doing things. It was not the even the curriculum where doing things like critical thinking, public speaking, strategy, like courses that you would not think um, you would do in the four walls of a classroom for a postgrad, but doing it right now. And it gave me at the end of the day all that I needed. But I didn't think I could achieve it. But God came through. Speaking to one person just gave me the opportunity. And he paid for it. So like every time someone asks me, Oh, how is school or where are you right now? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm doing a postgraduate degree and God paid for it. I applied and went about my business and then I got a scholarship. And then coming to school, I'm understanding that only four of us, one, two, three, three of us actually, or four of us. I'm not sure. But either three of us out of the class of 21 got a fully funded scholarship to come and study, right, and get this degree. I was on my own planning something. Do you understand? But God decided to come and he showed up and showed out and was very extra and loud about it. Right? So, like I said, you can never go wrong with God. Nothing goes wrong in his hands. Nothing spoils in his hands. While it is the initial grad route, the devil to make us doubt him. Right? Because, again, it's something I'm gradually struggling with right now. Um, I'm nearing the end of my program and questions like, what next? Um, what are you going to do? Are you going to get a job? Are you going to go find a degree? Are you going to... And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you, devil. I'm just going to get back on my knees. God who brought me out of Abuja and brought me to Lagos knows what he has planned for the next stage of my life. Yes. So it is yes. up to you as an individual to tune out the noise, shut out the voices around you, the voice of, well, give voice, give ears to the voice of reason around you, but tune out the voices um, around you, the noises, sorry, around you, and just say, God, what are you saying, right? And God speaks to people, which is why I said you need to give ears to the voice of reason, because God might use someone like Mrs. Amor <laughs> to speak to you and steer you in the right direction. But yeah, I just thought to share that testimony that God is extra, extravagant, huge, He's very dramatic. He does not really be a minimum. He's extra, extra, extra. Yeah, needed to say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, to be honest. I feel like um, just like adding to that, sometimes I look at the genres that we have in movies. You know, we have drama, we have comedy, we have, uh, I don't know, we have maybe love, romance, fantasy, sci-fi, and all of that. I I don't think we, oh, thriller, adventure. I don't think anything can beat living with God. Like, if you want comedy, God is hilarious. Very hilarious. Oof, sense of humor. Mm, mm, mm. (laughs) <laughs> Our father has a sense of humor. I think we get it from him. Anybody who is funny is in the nature of God. But please go ahead. Did you? Mm. So if he wants, if he wants um, adventure, he being with him is like the greatest adventure. Sometimes I just wonder if he just looks down like you enjoyed that, have you? I'm like, sir, you really could have made it simple. Yeah. You could have gone straight to the point, but no, we decided to do up, down, left, right until we now got there. It's like, yeah, but isn't it interesting? Didn't you have fun? <laughs> Didn't you have fun? So, everything is found in him drama, he's dramatic, yeah. adventure, he's adventurous, yeah. comedy, he's hilarious, yeah. loving, like romance, he's, he's actually the sweetest person ever. Yeah. Like he's the most romantic, but you you really need to go and get romantic tips from God, <laughs> lovingly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that would be all. I think you have invested a lot in us. You just described what people say. There is fullness of life in God. That's the fullness. 
as humans, those are the things we tend to tilt towards. But all of it is is just in God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of it is found in Him, and it's amazing. It's so so amazing. Even mystery, He's very mysterious. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trigger me for him. I said that I think he's, he's, I'm yeah. laughing so much because I think like the more the more you walk with God, the more you start to understand why they why he says seek him first, yeah. seek his kingdom first, seek yeah. his righteousness first. Because everything, everything you would ever want in mm. life, yeah. everything you would ever desire yeah. is found in him. Mm-hmm. He has the totality of our lives. Mm-hmm. And he even knows how to play each one when you need each one. When it's time for you to rest, when it's time for you to work. Mm-hmm. And he's going to put it in a way that at the end of it, you will see that your life was so fruitful. Yeah. But you do not have to strive yeah. to make it fruitful yeah. there's just a way that he would do it that at the end of the week you just be asking yourself like how did i do all these things mm-hmm. so some sometimes i see that men and women of god one of the things that they ask them a lot is how do you balance all your hearts how do you you know how are you able to be a mother a wife a minister a woman of god an international traveler all of that and it's like when you walk with god he's going to guide you so intentionally he's going to guide you so well that even you yourself you'll be asking yourself you're right oh how actually do i balance my life how do i put all these things together like every person has so many things has like i call it that every person is a world because one person is a daughter you have to be a daughter a son you're a child you were born by someone so you have parents is so most likely you have siblings it's more common to have siblings than to not have siblings so most likely you are a sister you are a brother to somebody then after that i would say seven out of ten you're going to be married Mm -hmm. so it's either you are a father or sorry it's either you're a husband or a wife yeah and then out of that you're married you now most likely have kids so you are most likely a father or a mother that's just that's already four yeah and then we're not at work so you're not a worker. Either you are an employee or an employer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> she gets the joke, don't worry. <laughs> oh god. This is well. So yeah. Just one person alone, that's already five. Five mm-hmm. five things. So the spiritual implications. So sometimes I'm very marveled by people that are very prayerful and they are very mindful about these spots in their lives. Because to pray as a daughter is already heavy. Yeah. To pray as a sister is already heavy. Mm-hmm. To pray as a mother, as a wife, everything is heavy. Mm-hmm. So just imagine combining all of that plus yourself. <laughs> this is my PSA to everyone out there. Well done. <laughs> well done. It's not easy being alive, no, but not. being alive with God, being alive in God is so much better yeah. than anything. Yeah. So I always hear people say I don't know how people live life without God. Like I don't know how people do it. But I can't even think about it. I can't picture it and I'm not even going to want to picture it because I don't want to do it. Life with God. Oh my god. Life on Zoom is complicated, but life with God, oh my God. I don't want to say it's a walk in the park, because I may be lying, but it's a walk in the park, actually. Everything is just it's it's easier. easier. It's an advantage. Yeah. You navigate it's life. It's a huge advantage. That's the word. You're an advantage. You're at an advantage. That's the word. You're an advantage. You're an advantage. English, you are at an advantage with God. Right, we've got on your side, so yeah, yeah, all right. So, please close us out with prayer. Yeah, and thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word that has come forth. Thank you for speaking through your children. 
thank you for for listening to that will listen to this word. I ask, oh God, that let the seed that will be sown in their heart yield a bountiful fruit and harvest in Jesus' name. It is your desire, Father, that we do not do life alone. It is your desire that we do not walk through this earth alone. I mean, it is the reason why you created a helpmate for Adam, our, our, our first father. So, Father, we ask, for oh God, as many that need the right people, the right community, to be authentic, to be their true authentic self with, for accountability and to navigate life, I ask that you give to them in Jesus' name. You give the best gifts, you, you give the best people, the gift of men. So, I ask that you give to anyone who is desiring of this gift, the gift of men, the gift of the right men, in Jesus' name. Remind us of your love. Remind us of how intentional you are with us through these relationships, oh God, in Jesus' name. If we're in the wrong relationships too, I ask, oh God, that you take us out of such relationships, Father, in the name of Jesus. It is not your desire that we stay in such relationships. So pull us out, oh God, from the wrong or negative relationships and place us, oh God, in relationships that will allow us to bloom and become fully all that you have called us to be here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you for the journey of this podcast. Thank you for how it has grown to become what it has become. We trust it in your hands, O oh God, and we trust that it will see many more years, many more seasons, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And your word, O oh God, that is constantly being poured out to your daughter, O oh God. I ask, O oh God, that it will not run dry, O oh God, in Jesus, she will step into the fullness of your calling over her life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And through her, oh God, your word will reach the ends of the earth, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, merciful Father, for your love. Thank you for your love once again, and thank you for your friendship. We love you, we trust you, and we depend on you. For in Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you for that i pray that the lord will replenish your wells of living water and that as you have begun your journey with him that you will always and forever hold on to the hand of the almighty and he will lift you up to levels of glory and grace that you could never have imagined in the name of jesus I pray that those that are connected to your relationships um, will always be true, will always stem from the love and the truth of God in all its ways, in the name of Jesus. Um, I may be fully rewarded in this life and in the next for your service unto God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray the same for you. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so then we're rounding up. And to be honest with how good this conversation has been, if you have not liked this video, subscribed or commented, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh-huh. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you again, except it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, but thank you so much for reaching till the end of this video and the announcement i wanted to give was that we at least yeah we will be having a break this is episode 30 i can't believe that we have reached 30 episodes on this podcast but god is good and there has been tremendous growth as well and so i just want to say thank you to every per person that has logged in subscribed liked shared commented um thank you so much um because i i have no other words but to say thank you i honor you i appreciate you and i ask that the lord will continuously bless you and um we'll be taking a three months break and by god's grace i should be back in september i'm having some life changes so <laughs> um that's the reason why we're going on a break and we'll We'll start up when we start up. I love you guys with the love of Christ. And bye.